Hi friends, we at GLC would like to take a quick moment to thank you for watching our programs on this platform. And we'd like to ask you for a little favor. Would you please go beneath this video and click the subscribe button? Did you know that by simply subscribing to the GLC YouTube channel, you can help us financially support the programs on this platform? You'll need to be signed into YouTube beforehand. But if not, simply click the subscribe button and YouTube will automatically walk you through the steps to sign in or to create an account. By taking these simple steps, you will not only ensure that you continue to receive our unique programming and gain instant access to the hundreds of videos we post, but more importantly, you'll also be telling YouTube that GLC's content is worth watching and promoting. Likewise, if you enjoyed a specific program, please click the thumbs up button below, which also helps inform YouTube that this is a program worth recommending. Finally, once you have logged in and subscribed, please click the notification bell below in order to receive announcements when we post new content. As usual, feel free to post your questions and comments in the comments section below. We always love hearing from our friends and viewers. Again, thank you for watching and supporting God's Learning Channel. We couldn't spread the message of the gospel without you. Be blessed, and we hope you enjoy the show. Folks, welcome to the show. I have none other than legendary hit maker, artist, pastor, speaker, musician from Santana to Hosanna. None other than the Leon Patillo. Hello, Leon. All right, man. What's up, baby? Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you, my man. Man, you haven't aged a bit. Oh, and, you uh, either, man. I think our eyes deteriorated at the same rate. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I remember you. On, buddy. Oh, it's going yeah. great. It's going great, you know, and and reading up about you. I mean, I love that hook line, you know, from Santana to, to Hosanna. I mean, you got started with creation and then became Leon's creation, from what I understand. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, got a record deal and all that. Then you went on to Santana, you know? Yeah, yeah. Man. Right there in that pocket, too. We were actually in L.A. trying to make it into that Hollywood scene. We had a manager who was just uh, one of the sweetest guys. We knew how to kind of hook us up on other tours. So if War was out, I would, we would be the opening act, creation would be. But we couldn't quite get footing. We kept trying to get in. It just didn't happen. Then all of a sudden... Uh, my manager called said, you know, Carlos Santana called today. I said, get out of here, man. I just thought of some, like, some TV cameras around, you know, in those days. And uh, he said, no, baby, he wants you to come and sing on an album. I said, wow. That's really, I didn't even know how he found out about me. But anyway, I ended up back up in San Francisco where I was born and raised. And uh, Carlos had a house over in Mill Valley. And so I drove over there. And when I got to the house, I knocked on the door. And his wife, Debbie, answered the door. And she and I went to school together. So I was like, wow, man, she she rose to a level of being his maid. I said, this is cool. <laughs> so I, I didn't say anything, but I came in. And I said, wow, Debbie's the maid now up here. And so Carlos came and hugged me from behind. And I said, hey, man, how you doing? I said, everything's good. And so he said, have you met my wife? I said, oh, your wife. <laughs> I said, yeah, I said, we, we were in the same circles growing up. So then he wow. took me downstairs uh, to the studio and Started with the hits, you know, Black Magic Woman and Oye Como Va, Gotta Change Your Evil Ways. And, and uh, so he had an wow. organ down there. So I just slid over on the organ. Uh -huh. He was mainly trying to audition me for my voice, but uh, he found out I could play too. And so that ended up being a thing. And the next thing I know, he's announcing right there in the basement in his studio that I was going to be the next lead vocalist for the group. I was oh, like, wow. Man. Wow. So that was kind of the beginning of my, what I would call the professional side of my life, you know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, Amazing. So you, a I, lot of you folks concert, were, go ahead. Yeah, our first concert was at Kizar Stadium and it was like 60,000 people, Brent. And I was like, Lord, am I going to even remember the words of these songs? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we did. We got the Black Magic Woman, and there was a part where they stopped. And I'm supposed to come, I got a Black Magic Woman. I'm supposed to come in with that part. And it, I don't know what happened in my head with all those people yelling and screaming. And, wow. and I just, for a minute, I kind of lost the words. Then I got it. And it, the whole place just went crazy. 
Wow. So we started doing it like that every night. <laughs> so hey. It arouses the crowd for me to hit for just a little bit of a pause there, you know. So but anyway, we, we got off to a good start. And I just uh, really appreciate you know, the Lord putting me in that kind of position, man. I could have been with any group, any kind of craziness. And Carlos is probably one of the better guys out there with, with great morals and yeah, you know, you know, got a little religious heart, you know, like that. Good guy. So uh just the sweetest man. So I was really thankful to get dropped in that group. And you know, Leon, a lot of people know you from Star of the Morning, I Lay in Zion, Dance Children Gosh. Dance. Uh, yes, how sir. many weddings that people sing Flesh of My Flesh? <laughs> so many great hits, man. And of course, you'd, oh, you'd go on it and, and do a, a, a record deal with Word Records. And uh, mm. man, you know, you've always yeah. been an innovator. Uh, I remember hearing stories about you in concert. When people oh, didn't really, really they, yeah, they didn't even know really what a synthesizer was. And here's Leon Patillo with the drum machine doing all these things, you know, yeah. I mean, just way, you've always been ahead of the game and yeah. Uh, yeah. talk about incredible music and I lay in, oh man, you know, when you were writing uh, that material, yeah. uh, before yeah. we get to that, yeah. your, your inspiration and your influences, what was it like uh, to be a believer in a rock band? Well, you know, it, it was, I guess, because I was with Carlos, and um, yeah. this is going to sound a little strange, but he was he was Buddhist, and he just loved that, you know, that's how he got his spiritual groove on. And so yeah. when I came down to his basement uh, studio, he had incense uh, burning. Wow. And I was wondering, you know, what, you know, I asked him, I said, well, why, why are you having incense down here burning? He said, well, I believe that's like prayers going up to God. Wow. I was like, man, I had never heard anybody in rock and roll yeah. talk about God, period. Uh, let alone, you know, just, he sounded like he had kind of like an a intimacy thing going on, you know. So anyway, I think that probably led to uh, when my girlfriend's brother, who was a Christian, approached me. Because they just right short after that, that's when I met this girl in San Francisco. Her brother, not only he's a Christian, he was one of them really outspoken type. And so, man, every time I came to the house, man, he was all over me. And wow. I don't care front door, side door, back door, attic. If I came, you know, in San Francisco, you could go through the basement and come up through the back door. There that brother was, man. I was like, <laughs> man, like the butler or something. So I, I, I just, out of uh, necessity, I went to a Bible study with him. I just wanted him to get off my back. I said, if there's some way I can, you know, Go to this Bible study, and then maybe I came over to the house. I could quote a scripture, go around and go see the sister. I thought that'd be the deal, but man, ah. I got to the Bible study, and they went up me one side and down the other. I knew something was happening. We got back to his driveway. Um, we're there uh, on the corner of Hayden Ashbury, if you can picture that. Uh, so all kind of cannabis is, is rolling through. I got the top down in my little Mercedes. We're sitting out in front of his house. And he just pops the question. He said, man, he said, how would you like to be, you know, how would you like to get your life right with the Lord? Wow. I said, man, I can't do that. Man, I'll probably mess up the whole kingdom. <laughs> he, said, no, man. he said, you pray with me, you'll see God will make a change in your life. I said, boy, wow. this is really something. I'm smelling this cannabis. He's over here with wanting to pray. And I don't know what kind of decision I should make at that point. But I knew it, it couldn't hurt because I'm thinking about Carlos. I said, well, look, you got incense going. He's talking about God. I said, maybe it's not that bad of a thing. Not a so, bad deal. Yeah, so I grabbed uh, <laughs> the brother's hand and right there in the car, man, we, made, we had a little prayer. And wow. uh, I made that commitment that night. That was in uh, 74, believe it or not. Man, it's a long time ago. Man. And on 4th of July. <laughs> so Whoa. five packets are going off and little kids running past the car with little sparklers and so it really was a uh, an Independence Day for me. It was a day I'll never forget, and I'm really thankful because it really was my root. I mean, mom and dad raised me in the church, but I just, you know, you get out here for a minute, and yeah. this this music pulls at you, man. All yeah. kind of that other lifestyle pull at you, you know. So it really made it a little bit like, I don't wow. know if I can really be committed to this because I got so many other scenarios around me. So, but over a period of time, you know, it was just a. It was a trust thing. I just kept walking and talking and reading and praying and uh, getting closer and closer each day. And 
and finally it, it really took a seat in my heart. So I'm, I'm really thankful for that. And I think wow. maybe that's why I'm still alive. Oh, without a doubt. The best of them. So well, <laughs> we, we, the only reason I'm alive. Without a doubt. And, and no doubt that, that, you know, you encouraged Carlos Santana as well. I mean, he's had quotes yeah. about Jesus, about yes. being depressed and thinking about Jesus and, my gosh, yeah. and, then, and then you'd go on, Leon, with these incredible, legendary songs that are the soundtrack of so many believers' lives, so inspired, and, and you're always innovating. You know, you got something new uh, called Sing, S-I-N-G. Why don't you tell us yeah. about that? Yeah, well, actually, I, mom and dad had foster kids in the home, so I grew up kind of around that set. So when I got out of Santana, that's the first thing I wanted to do is could I do something like mom and dad did, try to help wow. foster kids? So there's a lady in Sacramento, her name is Miriam Golden, and uh, she was with an organization called Koinonia Foster Homes. And so actually my agent hooked us up and said, man, she'd be a great lady, you know, for you to maybe help out. I know you talk about want to do something for foster kids. So wow. we got together, man. We've been hooked up ever since. I mean, we still hooked at the hip now. <laughs> so since wow. the mid-80s. And, but she... Uh, Stop being the CEO of the, of the company. And so at the same time, I was moving here to Vegas and I just thought, well, maybe we could do some with kids here. And man, come to find these some kids here really having some issues. You can imagine this town is crazy. So the yeah. kids, they really get, you know, kind of kicked to the curb. So we just started throwing our arms around all the school kids and trying to some music like that and some dance. And we got with just some dance groups, troops like that. And it was really wow. kind of cool. And, Next thing we know, they're confiding in me. They're telling me that they're getting bullied and some of them are talking about committing suicide and all that wow, sort of stuff. So, wow. so it got deep. And this is like 2011 we moved here. So ever since then, we just wow. thought we'd start this organization, Save and Inspire Next Generation. And that's Sing. And so oh, wow. uh, now we're, we're kind of moving into a new level. I thought... During the pandemic, the bullying would stop. I just thought they right. ain't going to school, so <laughs> they right. have any the issues, you know, because nobody's you know messing with them. Trying to find that social media man is wearing them out, teaching them how to be the bulimic, teaching them how to commit suicide. Yeah. And it's internet. They got you could just go on there and, and find all that stuff out, and that's what they're doing. And they think it's it's going to be an easier fix for them just leaving than to deal with whatever issues they got to deal with. So anyway, we're trying to give them. Uh, another focus, and uh, like I said, they're mostly non, you know, religious type kids. But you right. know, I'm trying to throw a little at them to give them some sort of moral compass. I think that's mainly what the kids need right now. They just need something that says, "This do this, do that." You see that red light? Stop. <laughs> you see the green wow. light? Go. Yes, yellow. Okay, just be cautious. You know, we're trying to give them those kind of things. So just real life issues that they can deal with. Don't be messing with somebody else's girlfriend or boyfriend. And I get you in trouble. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, little simple stuff to keep you from somebody knocking you out, you know? So, wow. but you know, that's, that's the part of the life we're, we're dealing with now. So I'm, I'm really thankful that we got, we are having an opportunity now to touch some of these kids' lives. And that's where it's at. That's where it's at, Leon. You know, yeah. you're, you go from dance children dance in the song to dance children dance with these kids in Vegas <laughs> and abroad. And of course, you know, yeah. we haven't even talked about you being a pastor yet, but you always have yeah. a new projects on the way, but you got a book, yeah. CD, movie. I mean, yeah, tell us yeah, these new projects yeah. you got going. Yeah. Well, we did the book right before the pandemic. So it never got a chance to get released. Uh, it's called in, yet. in your field. And it's actually, I'm kind of going through the book of Luke. I'm just picking scriptures that parallel kind of some of the things I've gone through in life. It's kind of like a memoirs as well, but it's just some great uh, things in there. And we, I even have one section in there about uh, how to treat your wife wow. and uh, how to have a conversation, you know, uh, you know, spouse to spouse. And I'm calling it a chapter chairs because I discovered that that's what, can really, if somebody just had a chance to sit down and talk through some stuff, you can work some stuff out. In fact, me and Renee, we were on our way to meet her brother one time, and uh, we got into some oh, some mad disagreement. And oh. then we headed down the road, and I just took us back home. And I just, I don't know what made me do it, but I took the one chair and the other chair, and I just put them facing each other. I think we did it out in the garage, because I did, Tony Robbins said, don't ever 
have any arguments uh, anywhere, right. like in the kitchen or the bedroom, because you're going to associate argument and, and that kind of craziness with those places. He said, go wow. somewhere, you know, that's that, that you don't know, visit much. So I set him up in the garage and I told Renee, I said, OK, have at me, have at me. Go ahead. And I said, I'm not going to say nothing. So she just rattled off some stuff. She got through. Then I did the same thing. And wow. I rattled off what I had to say to her. She didn't she didn't say anything. And then the hardest part, Brent, at the end, you know, Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Right, right. So we, we decided to kiss <laughs> before we got, you know, the night got too far. And that's the hardest part, just try, <laughs> try to, <laughs> you're still a little mad, you know, because you may agree to disagree, you know. A little angry kissing. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to get that last kiss, you know, <laughs> But it, it works, and it's like I said, just a practical teaching. But it's just something that I think couples can use as as a handle to to kind of deal with their frustrations. Well, you know, cu- so. couples need help. You know, uh, uh, maybe yeah. a good piece of advice: the chair to chair, right? Uh, or, yeah, or, yeah. or as my parents say, you know, people say, "Hey, how, how are you guys so happy?" Hey, fight naked. <laughs> Come on now, you know, you, you, you forget why you're upset. No, that's I'm not. right. Yeah, he's saying that girl. <laughs> well, you know, you you have you have so much going, so much. You're just being you, but because you've your life yeah. experience, my goodness, all the things that yeah. you are speaking to, all the things that you can speak to, I, I can only imagine what your concert experiences are like now. Uh, yeah. Also, with, with having having been a pastor as well, you know. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> touch on that, my man. Touch on that. Yeah, it's really you know we since that we. Renee and I met on a cruise. I just figured if I ever if I ever had a church, I'm gonna do it on a boat. That's why I kept saying, <laughs> so "Where can I find a boat enough, big enough to fit a whole congregation?" And so uh, Renee's family actually comes out of Long Beach, and so we spent a lot of time there. I said, "Oh man, Queen Mary, right over there in the port." And so we started having church on Queen Mary, <laughs> and it was the coolest. I mean, I had to keep shifting everybody away from the windows because. If I had them, that's all they want to look out and see the boats and everybody's <laughs> passing by on the skis, all that kind of stuff. So I had to switch the room around uh, for that. But anyway, it was really kind of a neat place. And we had probably 1,500 um, employees on the boat. Wow. So that gave us, sometimes we were wow. trying to think, where could we go to minister? And there it was right there. We could just yeah. go just to the maid or to the cook or to uh, somebody in housekeeping, we could go and just talk to them after church about the Lord. And I'd have them even invite them down during their break to just take 15, 20 minutes of a little bit of a sermon, you know, or whatever we had going on or have communion. Like, so we'd have communion every week so we could do that with whoever popped through. So uh, it was yeah. really cute, man. But I don't know, Brent, my, <clears throat> those shoes are big, baby. They're, those like ski boats. I, I just, I got these little old size nines and yeah, I could. I, just pastoring just wasn't. I wasn't Larry Lee enough. <laughs> you know, man, we, we mentioned had, him. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, man, I got to get out on the road, man. I just, I know that's where <laughs> God has me out. You know where I can get out with the people in various <laughs> countries and like that. So that's what I'm doing now. So for '09, I think we start back out. Yeah, '09 we went. We started the church in '98, and then uh, it was wow. done like about ten years. I just. So I hand over to my assistant pastor and he's still rolling. And so now I'm, I'm back out on the road. <laughs> wow. Wow. Now what, tell me, tell me, I mean, people, people can still have you in concert, have you at their, at yeah. their conventions and rallies and you're able to yeah. customize the experience for anything, man. Yeah. We had a, we were out with uh, I don't know if you heard of get motivated, but they were a yeah. great uh, company that dealt with, real estate people, people dealing with stocks, right. all that kind of stuff. And so from eight to five, we'd go to some big arena, like we would go to Dallas and we'd go and we'd have both arenas. I think we're in the big arena and then we're in a little smaller one. We had to do that two days in a row. With so many people coming and we'd have Gorbachev, we'd have uh, wow. Lady Thatcher, we'd have uh, all of the, the former presidents. We'd have a lot of them come. A lot of sports figures, whoever, whatever town we were in, we try to get the quarterback or the coach or somebody to pop in, just kind of give us their story. And so they just chose me to do the music for it. So, man, we'd have, wow. you know, 20,000 people, man. I had the business people and women up on their feet 
And we be doing, you know, we be doing them moves. <laughs> so, <laughs> I had, I had them hook up, man. So we we have we having fun. And then about eleven o'clock, uh, Peter Lowe, who was running this thing, he actually uh, would give an, an altar call, which would be kind of like a business deal. Right. Uh, he would do it like that, which I thought was kind of yeah, kind of cute the way he did it. And uh, so we'd have people sign on a little card in the uh, magazine, <clears throat> and they would. Um, hand that in and then we'd get these people in the Bible study. So that, that was kind of neat. So we did that from the same time I was doing the church. It paralleled that wow. because I could go out during the week to do that with them and then that'd still be home on the weekend for uh for church. And so wow. from 99 to 2012 I did that with them. So we're pretty versed with um being able to do any sort of uh situation. I mean I've found now that one deal really helped me a lot to find crossover kind of songs of course at the time i think only imagine it come out so i was able to do that definitely did you know god bless the usa everybody seemed to like that oh yeah the, i bet you said i bet you rock on that yeah it's good man i take you know, it's a little more soulful but you know that's just that's how the brother roll you know really. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> how you roll everybody's <laughs> singing along with it you know so and it's really a touching song and because uh, I do every once in a while, I do like flesh in my flesh. And I'll do, um, if it's an appropriate situation, I'll have people stand up and we'll do vows. And that's kind of fun too, because a lot of people are redoing, you know, their commitment to each other right there in the concert, which I think is right. kind of fun. And I've had so many uh, emails and, and letters back saying, brother, that when I did that commitment at your concert, man, he said that. I really needed that at that time. And uh, it really has changed my relationship with my wife or husband like that. So anyway, so we're finding ways to still hug everybody. I, I call it the big L. I, we're kind of, we're doing things, you know, pr praise and worship between us and the Lord. But then there's also some stuff that goes out uh, to people to give them some, some hugs on their life. So, uh, it, so it's just, a, it's a wonderful thing. All we're doing right now, this seems like a, a great time in life too to be doing to be used by God. So I'm thankful for that, Brent. Well, you know, you and your wife, you and Renee, sweet Renee, a power couple. And of course, yeah. you know, people get to encounter her, you know, when they're booking you. Uh need to bring you to GLC prime time. Also okay. the other shows I have uh on, on a CBS affiliate and beyond. Uh, of course folks who are watching right now live oh, at, you know <laughs> and we're on the yeah, street. Man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Knocking it out the park, brother. That's beautiful. <laughs> So proud of you, man. You know, uh -huh. you don't realize the impact that you're making still. Uh, you don't realize that you're still fresh in the mind of yeah. people who encountered you decades ago. You're not stopping anytime uh -huh. soon. And your ministry is only expanding, uh, Leon. And, you know, I, I'm amazed um, when I hear you speak. I'm thinking, man, yeah. he sounds just like he sings. And... Uh, <laughs> I can only imagine the preaching, you know. Uh, you hear my singing voice in the, when I talk, huh? Oh yeah, it's 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 one in a billion. Um, wow. It's wonderful, wow. but you know, my my joy, Leon, is, is to celebrate people who continue yeah. to have a reach like you do, a success like you do. I can't wait to see you in the Panhandle. Yeah. I can't wait to see you on these other networks as well. In addition to all the great things you're doing, folks, go to leonpatillo.org. Sign up for the newsletter. Sign up for the newsletter. Um, yeah. Be a part. You know, you know, Leon, uh, for the longest time, we, mm. through, through music, through television, through podcasts that you've done uh, and, and beyond, you know, you, you, you were taking territory from the prince of the power of the air because yeah. we know who the king of the air is. Yeah, and uh man i'm just so excited to to link up with you and lock shields with you how would you encourage right. people right now they're saying man this bible thing this bible thing's obviously true look at the news it's happening how would I you know, encourage them right now i know well i have really discovered that i mean we, it kind of gets back to the basics again i we don't get too far away from this if we can find a way to open up ourselves and and you know Love Big Papa in the sky. We can find a way to just go there, man. Because we have, I heard somebody say the other day about this place we have in our in our body. You know, it's really made for God. It's just like a, I don't know if it's a circle or a square or a star or what it is uh, or a cross. But there's a spot right here 
that only God fits. And we keep trying to put everything else in there to, you know, because we think, oh, well, if I put a little of this in there, put a little of this, I'll be happy. But you, it's just nothing else really fits. Uh, you can try it, but it just doesn't, it just oozes right out or it just can't get in there in the first place. But we're stuffing this area with things that should be more spiritual. And if there was any encouragement I'd give, I said, man, just let that spot have its spot, man. Have, have, let God do his thing and in your life. And you will notice it will go all throughout every area, all throughout your work experience, all throughout trying to reach out to other people, your family life, your love life, all of that is going to touch every bit of that. So I would just, I'd encourage you just to, even now, I would just say, you know, I would say, repeat after me, Lord, I know I need this thing in my life. I know I need you. I know what you did for me. It wasn't no, just any kind of thing you did for me on that cross. This was the real deal you did for me. And you would have done it if it was just me. And I just want to thank you now for doing that. And if you're saying this, man, this is a good thing. And just say to him, thank you for not giving up on me. Whew. And just tell him right now, say, Lord, I don't know too much about this, but I'm going to open up my heart. I'm going to open up this area and I'm going to say, Lord, come in, come in. If anybody can do something with my life, I want that done. And I believe you can do it. I've heard through the years, you can do it. So Lord, I'm opening up to you right now. And I asked that you change me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. Fill me with new life. Fill me with new direction. Who the sun sets free is truly free indeed. So right now, my friend, you have just accepted a new freedom in your life. Congratulations. Go on with Woo. this new life, and you're going to see some new things happen with you. If yeah. you're trying to get started, I just say, if you get to the book of John, it's in the Bible. Just read through. It's your new buddy. It's somebody you want to you know, hang out with and get to know. So take that book of John, just read through. And uh, digest that in, man. I guarantee you, over a period of time, things are going to change in your life. It's going to change for the good. And everything around you is just going to start to feel right. It's just going to start to feel right. Okay? Okay. So that's right. all I have to say to you. Yep. Right and right on time, folks. So there you go. Okay. Leon Patillo, what an honor. And folks, you, we'll, see you, we'll see you next time. Hang on, my man. Okay. Folks, God bless you. Hope you prayed that prayer. You. Share this with your friends. Thank you again, Leon. Thank you, Brent.